right guys we are going to be doing another how-to video uh, this time it's going to be with the SD60 locomotive by Atlas uh, there's your part number so this one has an NCE locomotive and this is for the continuation of replacing any locomotives with the NCE decoders with Digitrax so the tools that we're going to need pointy tweezers and a precision uh, screwdriver toolkit there's only going to be really one screwdriver that we're going to need and that's going to be a Phillips or the star screwdriver in this case for my setup it is the largest Phillips screwdriver which I think it's like a medium size so I don't even know what number it is I've used it so much that the number wore off all right to get things started what we're going to do is we're going to open up the case Can leave that there any of the spare parts we're going to throw in here or any of the parts that we're going to get out of here uh, take off the to take off the the shell off the chassis all i just got to do is grab the fuel tank grab the top of the train and just pull it whoa that was quick <laughs> just give a good uh firm pull on it so we'll put this off to the side next thing that we're going to want to do is remove the fuel tank uh, just Kind of open up the fuel tank on one side and just pull it off. Next they're going to be the trucks. Trucks just come off very easily, more or less. Just uh, gently pull. There you go. As well, I am going to lubricate. Well, maybe I don't need to. Uh, I'll clean it up. But I'll lubricate and clean up the, the contact strips over here. Uh, don't forget this uh, bad boy right here. Okay, next thing to do is, I guess we'll take this guy off. Put that off to the side. Oh, okay, now I know what this is. Okay, what this is, it's, uh, I guess it fell off. It's supposed to cover up the light, but it was off. So, it just fell out. It's okay, we'll just leave that on. Undo the screws on both ends. Now, as I was saying, what you can do, what I do is with the jewel case, the lid, once you take it, throw the screws in there so you don't lose, you don't have anything that goes missing on you. Then you have four pins here, one, two, three, and four. Um, let's get a closer shot. And what is uh, what these are, just plastic clips, just to hold the, the chassis together. So if we flip, uh, oh, you're not gonna be able to see it because of the PCB board. But uh, yeah, that's all you just gotta, uh, when you get in there, uh, just kind of pull down a little bit, and then you can pry open the, the chassis. Okay, now in the middle here, don't be, uh, just keep your eye on the, on the bushings. This is your insulator to keep the, um, to keep the chassis apart. So we'll put that off to the side. There we go, okay, let's just stay on this side. I'm gonna have to side so yeah like I was saying um, what you do is what it is is you have these little clips right here that poke through the chassis you can see right there it's still holding so I'm just gonna go in push it through 
Okay, so let's put this back together. There's that insulating bushing. We're gonna take that out so we don't lose it. One thing that I've noticed right now is that if we look close, this pickup right here is actually touching the chassis. We don't want that. And I've noticed that they used, they use a little piece of shrink tubing to insulate it. So we're gonna make sure that that shrink tubing is on. Let's put that back on. Make sure that it's like that. All right, let's put the drive shaft back in or the worm gear back in. All right, so everything else is in. Let's open up the new decoder. This is the decoder that I am using from Digitrax DN163A1. It's a drop-in decoder style makes things, for the most part, makes things pretty easy. This is a six function decoder and uh, you have multiple spots where you can solder four other uh, functions, like four other lights. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel this off is I'll actually just cut it right here. Now on this original PCB board, there are little tiny copper spacers little spaces that we need to take off that just flew away right there and we're gonna put those on the new board so let's get that done all right so we have those pieces put back on and now we're gonna install the pcb board all right, so to determine where the front is and where the back is, uh, this spot right here that you can see, this is where the contact strips from the motor are gonna go. So that's gonna, so that means that this side is back, that side's gonna be forward. The longer, the longer part is the back side, the shorter part is the front side. All right, so now that we determine what side is where and where it's gonna go, we're gonna take the side that has the motor and we're gonna place it in there, also being careful with the contacts the one with the bigger part of the contacts of the copper is going to be facing down. So the chips are going to be facing down. So now it's just time to just make sure everything is going to touch and it's going to work. Took a look at your contact leads for the motors. Make sure it's in the right spot. Sorry guys. All right, so I'm gonna do a little something a little bit different. I was able to get those leads for the motors up through this, through this area here. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna solder these leads onto the board. So that way we get solid good contact. All right, so let's get everything back together. So the things that we're gonna need are the insulators. That's, oh, get back here. That's where one insulator goes. Sorry about my hand being in the way. That's where the next insulator goes. Next thing to do is to put this back over. This is gonna get a little tricky because you don't want to need to line everything up, including the insulators. So let's put everything together. Oops and squeeze. Alrighty, put the screws back in. You don't want them super tight, but you don't want them loose. Nice and snug will do the trick. All right, next thing to do is we are gonna solder the points. I'm just gonna solder everything, making sure that we get full contact everywhere. This may be overkill, but it is what it is. So the motor leads actually come through these little holes over here. So I'm gonna solder the motor leads there, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of solder just to the corners where the 
chassis connects with the PCB board. All right, so as you can see, the points have been soldered and uh, I put the trucks on, made it a little bit easier to do the soldering. And uh, let's take it over to the track and see if it works. All right, so I have the locomotive on my programming track. I have paired up the ECOS and let's go ahead and see if it works. Uh, might help if I turn it on. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so enough of that. All right, so forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. The reason why it's yellow, it's because of the Teflon, Teflon. Not the Teflon, the the yellow tape is on there. So there's that. Very nice. Woohoo, it works. All right, let's put the show back on. All right, so let's start putting everything back together. Uh, let's go ahead and put the um, tank back. Uh, best way to see again is your fuel gauge and your fuel nozzle. It's gonna face the front of the train. So that's the front. Remember short, long, long is back, short is front. Fuel gauge is there. Uh, again, so what you wanna do is clip and snap. So I'm gonna go clip, bring it around, snap. There it's in. Don't forget about the light guard. Light guard goes on the front, like so. And then shell. And that's it. There you go. Trains back together. We got uh, we have the Digitrax decoder inside. Um, I'm gonna program it to the road number and I'll do a little bit of a run by.